Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and over the years, I've seen probably hundreds of memes referencing Pokemon players being terrorized by Zubats inside of caves. As soon as your repel wears off, boom! This is your life now. I stumbled upon another one of these memes recently, and it got me wondering, are they accurate? Is Zubat really the most annoying cave Pokemon, or is it just the most famous one? I've seen quite a few Geodude as well. Could Geodude or some other cave Pokemon be more annoying than Zubat? I set out to mathematically discover what truly is the most annoying cave Pokemon so the community can know once and for all. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel, tap that bell, you know the thing. And let's get started with what is actually the most annoying cave Pokemon. The first step is defining what is an annoying cave Pokemon. In my experience, and I'm sure the experience of many of you as well, what is annoying about traversing through Pokemon caves is that every single tile you can step on is basically like a patch of grass. Your traversal can be interrupted by a wild battle every single step you take, and that's annoying. Therefore, the Pokemon in caves that are the most annoying are the random ones that you cannot avoid without using a repel. Because of this, these are the only type of encounters I'm going to be looking at for this analysis. So other type of wild encounters in caves, such as fishing or rock smash or overworld encounters, like in Let's Go or in Sword and Shield, I'm not including those because they're comparatively easy to avoid. Just choose not to fish. Don't smash a rock if it's not in your way and walk around the overworld Pokemon. I should say though that surfing within caves absolutely counts. Water tiles are just like cave tiles. All of them can trigger a wild encounter. If you are surfing inside a cave, it's just like if you're walking throughout the rest of the cave. Therefore, surf encounters within a cave are included in this analysis. So that's the method part of the annoyance. Having your task interrupted is annoying, pretty much no matter what the task is. And in this case, the task is getting through the cave. So that's why traversing through Pokemon caves are annoying by default. But what makes one particular species of Pokemon more annoying as a cave Pokemon is seeing it over and over and over again. If every single encounter you had in a cave was a completely different Pokemon, they'd probably be less annoying because every time it started, you'd be like, ooh, what am I gonna get this time? But if it's the same Pokemon, especially a weak Pokemon, that you're seeing every time you take two steps, that specific Pokemon is gonna end up on your naughty list. Therefore, how I defined the most annoying cave Pokemon is the one that is a random encounter one that shows up the most often and in the most places. If a Pokemon has an extremely high encounter rate, but it only has that encounter rate and only shows up in one specific location, it's not gonna gain a reputation as an annoying cave Pokemon because you only gotta deal with it in one place. So now that we've defined the parameters for the most annoying cave Pokemon, I can get into my methods for how I figured it out. But real quick, before I do that, I wanna let you guys know and remind you if you've already seen my other videos recently that I'm doing my coolest merch campaign ever. I unlocked champion brand products on Teespring so you can buy this awesome Galar Champion jersey inspired design on high quality champion brand products. I'm calling this design a champion time because I am amazing. It's only available for a limited time though. Time's running out so if you want one, you're not gonna get one if you don't buy it within the window. So go to the link in the description below as soon as you can and pick up this awesome merch design. But back to cave Pokemon, how I definitively and mathematically figured out what the most annoying cave Pokemon was, was by creating a spreadsheet. A really, really big spreadsheet. The first step was looking at this Bulbapedia article about caves, and it lists all the caves in the main series Pokemon games. I am ignoring the Galar caves though for the reasons I mentioned earlier. They don't have random encounters. All of the encounters that are overworld or the weird stunfisk thing or fishing. So therefore none of the caves in the Galar region apply to my parameters for what cave Pokemon are annoying. I then would input the encounter table data for a particular cave into the spreadsheet. One row for every floor in every game that a particular cave shows up in. Take for example, Rock Tunnel. It has a lot of rows because it has multiple floors 
and these multiple floors show up throughout 10 games in the main series. Okay, technically 12, but remember, no Let's Go Pikachu, no Let's Go Eevee, all the encounters that are overworld, no overworld encounters, those aren't annoying. Then I go horizontally with each column being a Pokemon. I input its particular encounter percentage and check the sum check column to ensure that our row always totals to 100%. Side note for the locations where the encounter table changes depending on the time of day, I took the averages. So as an example, the Violet City side of Dark Cave in the Johto region has a 34% chance of giving you Zubat in the morning, but then 39% during the day and at night. So Zubat's value there is the average of those three, and it ends up being 37.333%, 37 and a third. Then back at the very top of the spreadsheet is a row keeping track of the total percentages that a Pokemon has throughout all the various floors and all the various games. These percentages aren't actually a percent of any total in particular, they're just the total amount of percentages that a Pokemon built up. I think this is a good way of mathematically determining what the most annoying cave Pokemon is, because it takes into account how many different games it shows up in, how many different caves it shows up in, how high its encounter rates are, and so forth. Making this spreadsheet took forever, oh my god. Manually entering the data was very tedious, but also very time consuming. So time consuming that while I created the spreadsheet, I didn't finish it. I got to about most of the way through Johto, and then I just didn't have time to work on it anymore because I had other videos to make. So I want to give a quick thank you shout out to my cousin William, who finished it for me. He did like Hoenn Onward, and he is the reason that this video is happening now rather than like five months from now. Also, a quick little fun fact to uh, pat myself on the back. There were a few times during this where I discovered that the encounter table data in Bulbapedia for a few places totaled to more than 100%. Ha, it was wrong. So I actually made a Bulbapedia account in order to fix these errors. So I contributed to the community. You're welcome. But now for the moment you've all been waiting for. What is the definitive most annoying cave Pokemon? What Pokemon shows up the most often in the most caves throughout the most games? Well, the answer is incredibly Zubat. Yeah, I was kind of hoping for a big fun surprise reveal too, but uh, nope, the memes exist for a reason. Zubat is genuinely everywhere. Here are the top 10 most frequently appearing cave Pokemon throughout all the main series games that were a part of this analysis. Zubat is a firm number one with over 12,000 total percentage points. And of course, Golbat is second place with about 11,800. Then it's an enormous drop down to Geodude, who I thought might have a chance to surpass Zubat, but I was clearly completely wrong. Well, I guess I wasn't completely wrong. I mean, it's third place out of all cave Pokemon, which is a big deal. It's just, I wasn't expecting such a dramatic difference between it and the bats. I thought I'd have a chance to pass them up. No way, Zubat's got like about triple the percentage points that Geodude does. Next was Graveler, which was unsurprising since Graveler replaces Geodude if the cave is later in the game, like how Golbat replaces Zubat. Next was Bulldore, and it being as high as fifth place despite only being around since generation five is a testament to just how widespread it is in the Unova games. Basculin is next for the same reasons as Bulldore, it's just everywhere in Unova cave waters rather than the cave land. Seal made it into the top 10, which is something I was surprised by at first. Then I looked at the spreadsheet for the Seafoam Islands, Icefall Cave, and the Royal Islands, and I understood. Seal really is everywhere in those locations, especially the Seafoam Islands. It's got a pretty solid encounter rate on all the various floors of it, and that place has five floors and it shows up in four generations. That one location really drove up Seal's numbers. Then was Woobat, the Unova Zubat knockoff, then Onyx, who makes a good amount of appearances, then Psyduck, which is in a kind of similar situation to Seal, but to a less extreme degree. But the end result for the most annoying cave Pokemon is still Zubat. But I think a big reason for this is how prevalent it is in Kanto. It's in so many of the Kanto caves, and there's quite a few of them, and those caves show up in 10 games that are a part of this analysis. All three Gen 1 games, all three Gen 2 games, Fire Red Leaf Green, and Heart Gold, and Soul Silver. Compare that to the Kalos caves, which only show up in two games. Because of this, I wanted to find out what the most annoying cave Pokemon were in each individual region. 
If we control for Zubat's prevalence in Kanto specifically, do other Pokemon end up being more annoying in individual particular regions that are not Kanto? This was a pretty easy thing to figure out once the spreadsheet was complete. I simply filtered the rows by the different regions, deleting all rows for any region that I'm not looking at. As for the results, first is the Kanto region, and unsurprisingly, Zubat is number one. Geodude actually passes up Golbat though, which I guess means that while Geodude is more prevalent in Kanto, Golbat is much more prevalent elsewhere. I also wanna draw attention to number five, which is Diglett. Diglett made it into the top five, despite only being in one cave. Diglett Cave showing up so many times in all the various games and having a near 100% encounter rate for just Diglett really boosts up its numbers. I must admit, I think this is a flaw in my analysis method because as I mentioned earlier, a Pokemon that only shows up in one location with a high encounter rate shouldn't be considered as annoying as a Pokemon that shows up in a lot of different places. But Diglett didn't end up as number one, it ended up as number five in just Kanto, so I don't think it ruined the end results. Next is the Sevi Islands. The data is pretty limited for this since there's just a couple caves and they were only in Fire and Leaf Green, but I figured it was worth a look. Zubat is again number one, with almost a third of its total here coming from Altering Cave since it has a 100% encounter rate there. Seal is number two because of how frequently it shows up in Icefall Cave, then Golbat and Tentacool are just a bit behind. Next is Johto and Zubat is once again number one. Looks like Zubat isn't just prevalent in Kanto, but in the adjacent region as well. What I find interesting though, is that Magikarp is the second most prevalent cave Pokemon in Johto. It accomplishes this by having enormous encounter rates from surfing in all the various parts of Dark Cave and in the Dragon's Den. These are the only two locations that Magikarp shows up, but in all those locations, it has a 90 or 100% encounter rate. So that really shoots up its numbers. Next up is the Hoenn region, and we finally have a region where Zubat is not the most annoying cave Pokemon. Instead, it's Golbat. This is driven primarily by the number of later game caves that cause Golbat to replace Zubat. Caves such as Seafloor Cavern, the Victory Road, the Cave of Origin, and the waterfall blocked parts of Meteor Falls but Zubat is still around a lot. Next are the results of the Sinnoh region caves and Zubat is on the top again, followed by Golbat, of course, then Geodude and Graveler. The highest ranked gen four Pokemon is Bronzong, thanks to its prevalence in Mount Coronet. And then comes the Unova region, and I guess at this point they felt bad for shoving Zubat down our throats so much they were just like, screw it, it's not in these games at all. In black and white, it was in black to and white too. For the reasons I mentioned earlier, Boldor and Basculin are numbers one and two, then followed by Wubat. Durant is somewhat close to the top three thanks to how often you see it in the Victory Road and Twist Mountain, but then after that, there's a pretty sizable drop. What's interesting is that despite being in black two and white two, Zubat has a 0% value for the Unova region. That's because the only place it's found in the wild in black two and white two is the Castelia City sewers, which Bulbapedia does not define as a cave. It behaves like a cave, but so does the power plant, and I didn't think that should count. Golbat is found in a few places though, and it ends up tied with some other Pokemon for 27. Next are the Kalos region caves, which are the X and Y caves, because those are the only games Kalos has ever been in. The most prevalent cave Pokemon here is actually Durant. Durant is only found within Terminus Cave, but it's found on all of its multiple floors and rooms with a 40% encounter rate. Durant just edges out Poliwhirl, which is only found by surfing in the Frost Cavern and a couple rooms in the Victory Road, but with a 66% encounter rate. Next is Graveler, because it's found in all the various floors of both Terminus Cave and the Victory Road, and then Girder is found all over the Victory Road. Kalos is weird with its caves. It's distinct from other regions for two reasons. The first is that several of the caves are just small. Connecting Cave and Glittering Cave being two examples where there's only one room or floor with random encounter Pokemon. The other reason is that the cave spawns in Kalos vary wildly. As a comparison, either Zubat or Golbat shows up in every single Kanto cave except Diglett's cave. However, in Kalos, the most amount of caves that a particular species shows up in as random encounters is two different caves. The final region that's a part of this analysis is Alola. Zubat once again takes the crown, followed by Golbat thanks to one or the other being present in literally every Alola cave. Alolan Diglett and Dugtrio are next, 
thanks to one or the other being present in every Alola cave except Mount Lanakila. So to recap, the most annoying cave Pokemon in every region, according to my methods, are Kanto is Zubat, the Sevi Islands is Zubat, Johto is Zubat, Hoenn is Golbat, Sinnoh is Zubat, Unova is Boldor, Kalos is Durant, Alola is Zubat, and overall is Zubat. Yeah, so my theory that Zubat was the most annoying cave Pokemon just because of how much it shows up in Kanto alone was completely wrong. Zubat and Golbat are genuinely everywhere except Unova and Kalos. Thanks so much for watching and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon who are helping support me during a difficult time for YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help do the same, the link is in the description below. Also, another way to support me is picking up a Champion Time shirt or sweater. The link is also below. All right, that's all I have for now. So until next time, big fans. Gotta catch them all.